this is Cody with Platform 9, and today we're going to be talking about our public cloud integration with OpenStack. So uh, what we've done is we've created um, a few OpenStack drivers for Amazon Web Services. Um, and those drivers integrate with um, the e EC2 um, project as well as the Elastic Block Storage as well as their VPC creation. So we'll, we'll go ahead and walk you through setting that up as well as using that. And we'll be flipping back and forth between um, the Platform 9 UI, the Amazon UI, and then we'll finish up with uh, a, a Horizon uh, look and how this works inside of Horizon as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. And um, let's create a new Amazon uh, VPC login. So we need to specify our Amazon VP, um, access key as well as our secret. And then we're going to specify um, the region that we want to use. So in this case, we're going to use US West 1. And we will go ahead and add those AWS credentials. Uh, now this takes a few seconds to complete. What we're doing is we're actually inventorying um, we're, we're authenticating, making sure those credentials are valid, and if not, we'd uh, spit that back. Uh, and then we're inventorying the um, Amazon VPC, and we're actually going to automatically ingest any instances and images and whatnot that are inside of um, Amazon. So we, we can go ahead and look, take a look at that. Um, you can see that this environment has a single AMI. Um, so this is our integration with Glance into um, Amazon. Um, and then you can see that we, we've also discovered an instance, right? We have a single instance here. We don't know what flavor it's based on or what source it was created from, but we have discovered that, and it is up and running here. Um, so, so that's that, and we can actually look in here and see that we do have that one running instance here um, inside here. So there's that one running instance that we have discovered. Um, so now uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to specify the networks for Amazon. So uh, we'll come over here and we will create a new network. Um, and then on this network page, the first one we'll create is a tenant network. Uh, so that network name is uh, going to be tenantnet. Okay. So we'll go ahead and create that. And then we're going to create our tenant subnet. And I'm going to choose a, uh, a 10 dot address here. So this will be 10.11.12.0 slash 24. And then uh, we're going to disable DHCP because we'll handle uh, assigning those IPs. And then uh, we're actually going to create an IP range here so that um, we can allocate these IP addresses. So um, Amazon requires the first three IPs uh, reserved for itself, and then Neutron needs a couple IPs for itself as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and always start this allocation and, and, and leave five IP addresses for uh, both Neutron and Amazon, and then we can use the rest of the pool. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and create those, and, and there we go. So we, now we have a, a new um, network or Amazon VPC, and you can see right here that if I refresh this, we just went from two to, uh, one to two. If I click on the subnets view, you can see that we have our tenant subnet. Um, that is in that network CIDR that we specified there. Um, so that's great. Um, that reflects instantly inside of Amazon. So now we need to be able to map to Amazon's external network. We need to create um, that for Neutron's purposes. So we're going to call this ext.net, and Amazon already has a, an external network ready that it hands, hands things out from. Um, so we'll call this ext subnet. And we just need to be able to um, tell Neutron about this. This is really just uh, information for Neutron. Um, so we're going to specify this slash 8 that Amazon uses to hand out IP addresses on. And uh, we're going to just go ahead and we're not even going to create an allocation pool. We're just going to tell um, Neutron that it has this external network with that slash 8 since that's where we get our IPs from Amazon. So now that we've done that, um, and, uh, and nothing would be reflecting inside of the Amazon VPC because, again, this is just for Neutron. Um, but now it's time to create a router, right? So we need to create a router to map these two together. So we'll come in here, we'll say we want to add a new router, and uh, we'll call this our demo router. All right, and then we're going to attach that to that external network um, and go ahead and create that router. Uh, so there you go. Um, we, we've done that. 
And uh, let's also grab this router and create an interface for it to be attached to our internal demo network. So let's go ahead and add that interface as well. Great. Um, so now if we actually go into the VPC here um, and click on our VPCs, you can see that our VPC is available. Um, it's, it's up and running um, and it is connected to that external network. Um, so, so we're in, in good shape here um, and what we can do is now we need to specify a public IP address um, or OpenStack calls them floating IPs. So let's go ahead and create a new floating IP address. Um, we're going to choose to create a new, uh, new one and do that from the external network. So we'll go ahead and create that here. Uh, we're given a 52.52.100.50. Um, and if we go into the VPC here and look at our elastic IPs, there it is. So we have our um, elastic IP address that was just assigned to us. Um, so, so that's most of the functionality that we have inside of the VPC. Um, so you can see we've created the, the, those subnets um, as well as um, we have that elastic IP here um, and we have an internet gateway that we created for that demo router um, that's all connected uh, to those, uh, those networks. So now uh, we need to start using some of the EC2 uh, services. So let's uh, go ahead and you see we have one running instance that we discovered. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, start creating instances. So the first thing we'll do is come over to the instances section here. We will create a new VM instance. We'll choose the demo API that we have available. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and choose a T2 small, so there's a, a ton of flavors here inside of Amazon, a ton of options that we've discovered. So I'm going to use our search function to narrow that down to our T2 small. Uh, there we go. And then we'll choose that uh, tenant network that we have. Uh, we'll go ahead and give this thing a name. We'll call this uh, demo instance. And uh, we're actually going to specify some guest customization here. So I have we have a great support article that talks about that. Um, so I'm going to copy these first uh, few lines here and uh, go ahead and paste that in just to um, set a default password, have that password never expire, enable password auth over SSH so we don't need to use keys, uh, which we do support, but you know, this is kind of handy. And then we're going to run a command and we're going to actually um, just shell out and echo hello world from PF9 into a text file. So let's go ahead and click next here and let's create that instance. So that instance is being created. Um, you can see that it's building here. And if I refresh, you can see it's going to get that first IP here of .5. Um, and if I go over to the EC2 management here um, and I do a refresh, you can see we now have two running instances. And I can come in here and you can see that it is, it is up and running. There's that demo instance here. Um, and you can see that it doesn't have a public IP address or anything, so there's no way for me to connect to it. So this is where Elastic IPs come in. Um, so we can actually go here and click on this demo instance, go to networking and assign a floating IP address. We'll choose that from the drop down here and assign that floating IP. Okay. So now we've assigned a floating IP address here, and if we jump back into the EC2 and do a uh, don't even have to refresh. There it is. It instantly showed up. Um, so we have that IP. Um, we have that there as well. Um, so now what I can do is I can actually uh, just connect to that IP. So it's uh, 52.52.100.50. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say yes. And I specified the password uh, in the guest customization of Winter Wonderland. So there I am, I'm connected to that um, EC2 Linux AMI, and uh, if I connect to root, I'm in good shape, and I should be able to cat that pf9.txt file that we put in there. So full CloudNet customization works, and I should be able to get out to the internet now as well. Uh, so we're in good shape here. Uh, we're able to create an instance, but, um, you know, that that's handy, but a lot of times we need, um, you know, Draw, uh, additional disks attached to this. So let's look at our sender integration with EC2. So switch over to volumes and snapshots here. Let's create a new volume. Uh, we're not going to create that volume from anything. We're just going to create a brand new empty volume. And we'll call this demo volume. Um, and we'll go ahead and do this a size of uh, 10 gigabytes here. 
and let's go ahead and uh, click next and go ahead and create that. So you can see that volume is being created. Um, if we go over to the EC2 management si uh, side of things here um, and we go to the volume section, um, you can see that that volume is here and it's available. Now these other two that were not discovered um, essentially are used for the AMI. So any, any volumes that are mapped to AMI images, we uh, don't discover those automatically. Um, so just the uh, standard volume types is what we will discover. Um, so that's great. Um, so we have that now. So let's go ahead and attach that. So we'll check this checkbox here. Attach that volume to our demo instance. And let's attach that. Uh, so that's being attached at this moment, and there you go. It is attached. So if we switch over back to that instance, I should be able to do an F disk uh, minus L, and there is that 10 gig uh, volume there as well. Uh, so there's that integration, um, and uh, you know, last but not least, you know, uh, it, it's great that all of this works in both the platform nine UI and the EC2 um, and VPC UI, right, where you can manage everything through um, either direction here, and they'll both do bi-directional discovery. Um, but it's, it's also nice to know that this will work with the native horizon. So um, you can see that we have that instance here that we created. Um, it's then created, uh, connected to a network, to that router, and then out to that external network, right? So all of this that we just created just now is, uh, you know, usable through here. We can come into the compute section here and look at our instances. And uh, although Horizon is uh, slightly slower than our, our Clarity UI, it does all work. Um, so uh, there you go. So that, that is our Platform 9 um, integration with, uh, with Amazon. And I'd like to thank you for your time.